What's going on, family? Thank y'all for joining me on another episode of Abandoned Voices. Joining me today, my boy, Mr. Anthony Jackson Jr. Young man with a plan, right? Yes, sir. That's what they call me. All right. What's going on with you, Mr. Anthony? I Look, can't complain. You're running for, once again, y'all, my man is running for, what is this? New Orleans? Yes, state representative. State representative. District 100. And that area covers New Orleans East, uh, the main parts, Crowder, Reed, Bullard, and, and Miss you as well. All right, I asked a lot of them questions. What exactly <laughs> is, I wish I didn't in school, but uh, you know, it's another subject another day. <laughs> exactly is a state representative. A state representative is essentially a legislature, aka means lawmaker. You can pass a law, you can vote on a bill, you can introduce a bill, and those bills particularly affect your district as well as the state. So when you talk about laws with criminal justice reform, you talk about laws with business, you talk about laws dealing with education, these are laws that you can introduce to the house to get passed to help help your district go in a positive direction. And your district would be New Orleans East? Absolutely, which, which means that we have a lot of work to do, but we can collectively, as a community, come together and, and pull our heads together and get, get the job done, get this district back in shape. Yes, basically the plan. When I, when I say plan, essentially, when I when I study politics, I saw that a lot of politicians made empty promises that they couldn't keep. So what happens that, is that's the name of the game, though, right? Well, that, that's why I'm running because it's a new day in politics, and for for me, I want to change the demographics. We don't have to lie to anybody. We the people just want to be informed, and they want somebody that's going to be real and transparent with them. Right. Because right. what happens is. The old way of doing politics is you, you make all these empty promises, but what happens when you don't deliver? The, you're, you're looked, you're viewed by your constituents as a liar. A liar. Uh, didn't come through. You didn't come through. You didn't deliver. I mean, you can't please everybody anyway, but you can make a compromise. Right. It's a happy. I, I believe yeah. it's a it's a happy medium in politics. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people just just stick to your word and stick to something that is in reality. For example. One of, one of my main targets is the education system, you know, with the charter schools. Mm -hmm. One of my main priorities when I get up there is to, to partner with people that are like-minded, which means that I don't want to expand charter schools. I'm not knocking charter schools. Of course, I'm for quality education, whichever fits the mold of the child, and as, as well as a child with, with special needs, as well as a child that may have different learning styles because every child is different but I want everybody to be protected for one feel safe in the schools and have that 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 quality education and I think that we have been dropping the ball in in the school systems and we have just been rewarding kids for just showing up and we have to change that narrative yeah, I'm one of them <laughs> to show up that's it <laughs> so I, I look at basically what I'm saying to to my my, my citizens is that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I mean, we, we we all grew up in a, majority of us grew up in a public school, you know, setting where the schools were ran by the public school. Mm -hmm. And back then, in, in my opinion, you had more parent participation, but you also had accountability. And I think that's everybody's upcry and uproar about, about the charter schools. We don't have the accountability that we had when they were ran by the Orleans Parish School. How old are you? 22 years old, sir. 22. Yes. Huh? Well, I, I, I'll tell you this. What happened was, a lot of my friends decided to go to Atlanta, New York, Florida, a lot of the, the big cities, per se. But I said that, I told them, I said, we can stay right here in New Orleans and, and build up our city. I'm not going to run and make somewhere else. Exactly. Put, put them in lights and, and we, we're stuck left with the problem. I wanted to sit back. And actually, I actually grew up in New Orleans East, so I wanted to, yeah, I'm, I'm from the East, you know. I went to Brother Martin High School, of course, but that was my choice because I wanted to learn the dynamic of how life really goes. Right. And what I mean by that is going to school with, in a diverse setting, it really opens your eyes to the way the world operates. Right. Yeah. And and I wish a lot of kids had the opportunity that I had to, to, have, to, to, to go through that experience and get that exposure. Is, is it a way, like... If you become elected, you get New Orleans East to be that way. School Ab absolutely, but it's going to take me being accountable, 
the school and the parents because it's, it's, everything is full circle. Mm -hmm. Everything starts at home. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. And I believe that I'm young so I can speak on my generation. We have to learn. Yeah, we're a wild generation now. We have to learn respect for our elders. Definitely. Most of us have to learn respect for our elders, but we have to learn to respect our parents. If you don't respect your parents, then anybody that you see in the public that tries to steer you in the right direction, mm -hmm. I don't have to listen to you. I don't even respect my mom and my dad. The school system thing, that's fine. That's that's awesome. It's amazing. But New Orleans East biggest problem is crime. You, well, you, you have type of, well, would you have any type of control, uh, say, so over that? The crime, again, I want to tackle that with partnering up with law enforcement. Also, to be honest with you, crime can be shut down if we expand police powers and if we we give arrestive powers to armed security guards and we give them the same respect and power that the sheriffs have, the state troopers, as well as NOPD. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have too many agencies, period, throughout New Orleans, but especially Louisiana, for crime to be an issue. I think that in crime, the number one the number one element to crime from stopping it from from a standpoint of reducing a, or, or reducing the, the crime rate is, is visibility. Exactly. You see officers, you see more when you people see around you people, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah people stupid. people and that's why I'm a firm believer of hiring private security companies, especially the residential areas. Mm -hmm. And because you have you have a uh, workers, you know, people that work all different hours of the night coming home one two in the morning which we're not asking anybody to be inside there's no curfew you you have that right to work and provide but wouldn't it be nice if you had someone watching you go inside your home patrolling your area patrolling your area you see that constant visibility it just it just makes you feel safe and, and all that starts from psychological you know when you go to the airport you, you go through those checkpoints mm -hmm. you know that's why they have locks on doors it's actually a, a psychological element mm -hmm. to why just like that fence we have the ability to jump over that fence but because that gate is there we don't know what's particularly behind that fence exactly. so it, it, it psychologically in our mind jump we, that fence. <laughs> we, we don't know the risk we don't know the outcome and I think when people if people depend or rely on the police not coming in a, in a, in a appropriate response time or not being visible then I can hey I can I can play all day in this area but if you know somebody oh, somebody's you always know somebody's there. watching somebody's coming uh, I gotta be careful because I they or you know they you, hot you, around there you know just not gonna do it yeah I'm not gonna like do it say, that, it that's, ain't worth a hot area or that's a protected area as you can right. say right now when you talk about crime in the east I have a different perspective I believe that it's not necessarily a crime problem, it's an economic problem. I, I believe personally, crime is the end result of lack of economic opportunity, but also right. boredom. When you look at it, in New Orleans East, I want to, and which drives, which brings me in to my third point, I want to bring job training to the, to the, the district. I want to also partner with, with the unions and all these parish school board to bring back the uh, trade schools, the because trade, the trade trades, school. meaning oh, that, trades. All right, yeah, all right. like welding, yeah, yeah. home economics, mechanics. You'd be surprised, a lot of people don't even know how to change brakes on the car or change a flat tire. These are the necessities that we need and that we use on a daily basis, but it's it's been so driven out of the community that people have forgotten, hey, Everybody's not going to college, so you need to give people an alternative route, as well as parents. Parents need training as well. Exactly. If you have, and, and that's where most of the problems come, you have a lot of broken families in New Orleans East. You have a lot of single family homes. So what happens is the burden of finances becomes on one person. So in most cases, if you if you don't have people that had structure in their lives, in most cases it pours over mm -hmm. into the next generation. So. If, what I'm saying for my people, I want to uplift my people. I want my people. We've came so far from slavery, but we still have ways to go. Now we have to, instead of us selling drugs, we have to look at generational wealth and what's what's going to be legacy for our kids necessarily. We have to leave something for them behind so that the next generation can be better and better and better. You know, I I, I, I believe that crime, we don't really have a crime problem in the East. We have an economic problem. Because the 
average average uh, income per household is only what thirty three or uh, anywhere from thirty three to thirty six thousand dollars per household. That's not enough to live. So especially for a household of people. And then you, when you talk about issues like affordable housing, people have to realize the average salary for a job in New Orleans. What what they always hire for cooks, dishwashers, tourism, security. That's eight to twelve dollar job range. Exactly. So you're looking at rent in most cases, thousand, eleven $1, hundred dollars per month. So that spills into minimum wage being seven twenty five. There's no way. So something gonna have to give. So what what I tell people, it's to the point where in New Orleans, where you may need fifty or sixty thousand per person to make it, you're gonna have to drive Uber or have another stream of income to consolidate them both and to actually live and be comfortable. So I, I just wanna, that's what I wanna do for my district. I wanna bring back the information and resources and find out how the money is spent and tap into the entrepreneurship because we have a lot of brilliant, hardworking people in the world. It's just that when you when you blight the property, meaning that when you, when you suck the life out of an area and you don't have a plan to replenish the area and, and really rebuild it, this is the outcome. This is this is the result of that. So, so why do you think New Orleans is, is, is forgotten no, about? Let's forgotten, just say it. Yeah, forgotten, forgotten about, about. Overlook, whatever. I mean, my reason I think because majority of black folks. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. And you know what? You're not wrong for saying that. Let, let's let's just be clear. Part of me running is is is, is being honest, mm -hmm. and I believe personally, as from a citizen standpoint, it is a system that is in place just like right now we have you know the the property prices mm -hmm. people having to do tax assessments and having to appeal their taxes going up see the problem is if people don't look at the big picture we don't want people to get pushed out further and further when i say us i'm saying the locals mm -hmm. and what happens is that's how area of it, you know area becomes gentrified when, when you keep pushing people out and you're raising all the taxes, you're raising all the property value, the the locals can't afford it based exactly. off the jobs that y'all have in, in this exactly. in this uh, area. So what happens is we have out of town people, we have other, other parties that want to come in and invest, but that may not always be the best option for us. People that families have grown here, people that have raised their children, their grandchildren, so I think that is the biggest that is the biggest concern that we have as citizens sometimes. And as far as New Orleans East, I, I believe in actions. I've been out here, it's been 14 years since Katrina. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did y'all really have a plan to rebuild New Orleans East? I say the same thing. I think Hurricane Katrina was like the worst thing happened to New Orleans East. I grew up in New Orleans East. Yes. I was, I was here before Katrina, years before Katrina. And, and we didn't have... We and didn't, it wasn't that like it. It, it was, wasn't like it. It was growing. And it, it like was flourishing. And that's why I say it's like now, <laughs> since the storm, like all the other communities got something. All the other communities, we got to get a Walmart after for so long that people's crying. But other than that... And see that, and, and that's, that's what really... But at Walmart, they're like, yeah, go shut up now. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> and you took the words right out of my yeah, mouth, go. brother. Like, you... You give us you, you you give us little incentives to, to to put a muzzle on our mouths or to keep us quiet, but it's no follow up, there's no consistency. When you have just like for example, we have a New Orleans East Hospital. Alright, nice, wonderful mm -hmm. facility. But when you put something as as pivotal as a as New Orleans East Hospital and it's no follow up, we just took a huge hit losing lows. It's no follow-up. There's no consistency. Exactly. So how long Even we, in that area? You yeah, see, you know, it's, it's dead. You start fixing the area up. I mean... And it, it's so many... It's so much land. We have the biggest land space in... More than... Bigger than anybody in the city. Okay? Mm -hmm. 85,000 residents. It was 80. We got an extra five more. 5,000 more. 85,000 residents. We should be marketed for retail jobs, factories, Fortune 500 companies, technology companies. I was upset recently because we lost the bid to Jefferson Parish on Hewitt's Pie. Oh, oh Hewitt's Pie. 
you will be inspired. Right. Now we New Orleans played a huge role in, in, in making that that name you will be inspired. Exactly. You know, a household name. So I, I just don't understand why our parish right. <laughs> just doesn't house the facility where they, they make these wonderful, amazing pies. I, I just don't understand it, but we have to have people in the office that's gonna be strong and that's gonna say, hey, look, why my people not getting the fair share? Y'all keep skipping us. We need we need we need people that's gonna speak up and be strong. Look, exactly. it's not about and that's why I say it's a new day in politics. Listen, you my boy, but if you messing up, it's my job to tell you, hey, you need to tighten up. If I'm your boy. Exactly. exactly. But I, I, I don't your real friend gonna tell you. Your real friend gonna tell you. I mean you gotta get together. You you've been slacking. You you've been you have not been coming through. Listen, you got you got district district A, district B, district C coming up. I mean think about it. Now we're talking the people are so thirsty. And when I mean thirsty, we, we're in dire need of wanting to spend our money in the district, but they can't. Mm -hmm. And you look at places, they have a Starbucks in the Magnolia. What? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> So why can't we have the same blueprint exactly. of the Rouses, the TJ Maxx? They got everything right and everything is so perfect to where they just get out. Let's talk about the Bywater area where they're fixing they're fixing their, their quality of life and they have entertainment. We don't have any entertainment. No entertainment out here. Look at the color of people. So that makes you wonder. I mean, every, is there a plot or a not a plan put in place to rebuild New Orleans East? That that that's your answer. I, I because think, I think it's a plan. It's just not. It's just not pursued. It's just one of those. All right, we gonna we gonna get to when we get to right. but other things are more important. And I just can't. I just I can't. Mean, if you ask I can't anybody, they all always have these big ideas. Like I say, it, it takes more than just one congressperson to do it. It right. takes, you know, a group of people. And if if you and it got four others, you outvoted. So you're playing out of weight because other four, right. you know, the ma majority wins, you know. So what I want to do, and, and, that's, and that's exactly how politics works. That's why I, I made the comment about, you know, the, the, the system and being boys and friends, all that's good, but... If you say you're gonna come through for for my citizens of my district, and it's just like when I get up to Baton Rouge, you're not just gonna come out swinging. Every every plan I have written down is gonna is gonna be voted on because I have the you have 105 other districts. Right, so right. it's about coalitions, which is nothing wrong with a coalition or a machine. But when you get a part of these coalitions, we need to make sure that we have we're on the same page and that our agenda. It's not just to help our friends, but help everybody, help the community be equal. It, it shouldn't just be, okay, a certain group of people gonna be in, and we're gonna make sure all our friends, all the status quo, and the East is taken care of, but we, we don't have the citizens getting what they need. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about them. As long as our pocket's fat, we're not worrying about the East. We need to break all that up. We need to start fresh. And, and another thing I believe I wanna say that if you're part of a, a group or a, a coalition, us as blacks in politics, if you know somebody's weak or, or, or not strong to represent people, why fund that person? Why put money behind that person? Mm -hmm. Why not sit down and let's say, hey, you're the, you're the better person for the job. We know you're going to have a voice. We know you're going to talk to the people. We know you're going to be patient. And that's the old way of politics. Well, I'm not gonna tell the young people they don't vote. I'm not gonna be on social media advertising because they don't. It, it's not even worth it. But that's where you're wrong. See, I include everybody. But by me being young and being youthful, I, I understand that. I understand people. The, the reason why people do what they do and why they act out. And what I would tell that person that's negative. You're right. I don't have experience in policies that clearly are not working. I do have experience in taking a new fresh a new fresh approach to crime and economics. You know, I wanna I wanna I wanna tell people I encourage my, my citizens, hey, let's start your own business. I wanna help develop small business. How I wanna do that? I wanna help secure capital and funding. Mm -hmm. 
you know, on the state level, city, local level, and through partnerships. Everything, you know that I keep saying partnerships? Because you can't get things done by yourself. You're gonna to have to partner with people. But I just wanna make sure that these people see my vision and they invest in and they believe in me based off what I'm trying to do. And sometimes you may have to go outside of the city to find investors that wanna bring business to New Orleans East. But when you come to New Orleans East, I would tell any investor, make sure your money is right, right and long, and don't rely on the city to give you things. You need to come with your wallet big and with a, with a vision, let's roll. You know, um, and I, I wanted to touch on a few things. Before I ran, not only did I do community initiatives, mm -hmm. but I work in public safety. Okay. So that is that is my profession, public safety. So when you talk about mental health, you talk about crime, things of that nature. And I also work as a school resource officer in a charter school. So I saw how... So you have experience. Yes, I have experience. You're not a politician, like they say, but... No, I, I, I worked. I have political experience. I worked mm -hmm. on numerous campaigns. Okay, okay. I, I, I used to intern at City Hall for the council people, you know, writing the reports, answering phones. I've done, I've, you know... So, you, so you've been plotting on this, on this huh? Been, absolutely. Uh, I, absolutely. With, with, with opportunity, huh? Yes, yes. So I also... Uh, interned for uh, clerk of court Arthur Morrell at the courthouse, and I used to be a uh, personal assistant to the mayor of Kenner. Okay. You know, so I've I've been around the political sector, and I've I've worked on the the mayor campaign, judges campaigns. I've worked on multiple campaign chairs, so I've seen I saw the mistakes people made. And I just wanted to, to bring a new, fresh approach. But I would tell anybody that's trying to come behind me and run that don't expect for the elders in the game most of the time to give you that validation or to, to back you up because a lot of elders in the political world, they don't want to let it go. They don't want to take their number and pass the baton. So, you know, they'll hit you with that. Oh, young brother, it's not your time. Don't ever let nobody tell you it's not your exactly, time. Exactly. If God tell you it's your time, then it's your time. You have a plan. You have a message. And politics is about messaging and being relatable. If people can hear what you're saying and feel you and feel what you're saying, then that's that's the man for the job. And then on top of that, when you have charisma and you're approachable, I see a lot of times people put on a mask when 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 they're running for office they shake hands they smile and they phone it and, and and that's what a lot of people see especially the young people so they like it definitely is man whatever anybody <laughs> that knows me knows that i'm a teddy bear at heart but just don't poke the bear i tell anybody that and what i mean by don't poke the bear just don't <laughs> cross me don't 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 poke at me that's why i say with the negative people i don't even i don't even give I don't, you can't give someone negative, you can't give them that attention that they're looking for because, and I tell, especially to the young people, I tell them, a hater is really a fan. Yeah. They just don't want to accept it. Accept it, yeah. You're because, right. and I never, that's why, that's what I mean, I never get mad at, at someone that, that critiques me or that may be negative towards me or that's always looking for a flaw because essentially you're making me better oh, i don't like the way your tire looks you need it oh, i don't like the way this this or that okay you know something i didn't see that but you know what brother thank, thank you, you for seeing it. for pointing it out so now i'm really not so i rather a hater say something because you may say something that other people were thinking but when a hater see you and they can't say nothing oh, oh that's game time yeah you didn't yeah. apply pressure there so I don't really, I don't look at it as a bad thing. And, and, and when you're going into public life, you have to realize that people play all kinds of games and I'm experiencing that on a campaign trail. It's an emotional battle and it's also a spiritual battle. So by me being raised in the church, I know what to, to pray. Whenever I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed or I'm getting stressed out, I know how to get on my knees. And that's bigger than any man or force because People play all kind of games. People gonna come at you sideways. Or oh, I heard you talking about me and all that kiddish, you know, gossip. But real men don't engage in gossip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So 
you heard a rumor, but I believe from a psychological aspect, it's something else behind it. Is there any negative rumors going around about you right, right now that you want to shut down? I haven't heard anything, but you said the rumor. Not, so. not yet, and I'm glad, and, and I want to say- You said not yet, because you know they're coming, right? <laughs> I know I know politics can be a dirty game, and I've talked to my opponent prior to us running, and you know we, we, we both told each other, hey, we're gonna run a clean campaign. And thus far, I have not seen any negative ads, anything negative on Facebook about me, in no kind of smearing have I went through publicly. Uh, and that's why I say you're gonna have people you know that that try to call you, you know, with mess and be bone collectors, and bone carriers. So, when is our election day? October twelfth. Okay, so October twelfth. So we have about, I want to say, forty-four days to uh, for the decision to be made. And early voting is September twenty-eighth through October fifth. You've been out here campaigning every day since, huh? Yes, and, and it's mostly in a district race. It's about shaking hands and, and name recognition having those tough conversations, knocking on doors. People just want to hear from you, and they, people just want someone that's going to be real and face the music. They're tired of people, and, and that's why I say we, we have to change the narrative of how politicians, okay, we got to stop voting for suits and start voting for people. We don't need people that's like going, that. you know, like we, we don't need nobody. Stop voting for suits and, and vote, vote for, for people. people. I don't need you coming around me, you know, in, in, in your Steve Harvey suit or your Sunday best, and you stab me in my back when I walk off. I need somebody that's going to be real, transparent, and that's going to be responsible. Again, I have no criminal record. I have no child support. I'm single. I don't have any children. I, I, I file my taxes. I pay my taxes. <laughs> Look, I'm just out here trying to make it. I'm a black man in America. So I decided to run. I, I figured, why cry about it or, or complain about the leadership or representation we have now? Mm -hmm. You can just do it yourself. You got any brothers and sisters? Yes, I'm the youngest of three, so I have two older sisters, and I'm the youngest. I'm the baby boy, but big brother at heart, you know. So you got two older sisters. Yeah. But how do you feel about your running? They excited, you know. It's, it's a, and it's, I'm glad that I'm the youngest running. So you know, <laughs> I, I got a little clout in the family now, um, you know. But you're the youngest, but the but the oldest, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got, you know, they show me a lot of respect and, uh -huh. and, and a lot of support, and. They, my family, we're a very closely family, so we, they keep me grounded, and they keep me on my toes, which is what I need, and they also tell me the truth if, if, if they're not feeling it. So you say you got two older sisters, right? Yes. I mean, you got three mamas then, huh? <laughs> yes, it was a Mama, lot. Yes. Older sister, older sister, that's like mom. So yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's nothing wrong with that, dude. Oh, no, that's I learned, that at all. I, I learned how to, nothing wrong that at how all. to treat women from them, I learned what women are looking for and what kind of what kind of man I would want to be as as a as a father and as a you know as a man of society and when you talk about like the me too movements and you know stuff like that where women have been experiencing over the years it's really sad and it's really it's really disheartening so because I'm I'm close with with the females in my life I have I have that that, that insight that understanding and an understanding yeah, that definitely. this is what this is what when women are needing and looking for and I think as black men we have to we have to take take responsibility and that's why I, I salute you big brother take care of your family and really really holding it down because a lot of a lot of women even if you I always tell men even if you're not with the mother don't use that kid and even the woman don't use that kid as a pawn to get back at the person because the kid suffers in the end. Exactly. So the kids don't pick, they don't ask when it's their time to come to earth. So they should be deprived of that structure. And that's the key word that we need in New Orleans East. Structure. We need organization. We need leadership. We need, we need marketing. We need entertainment. We need a better quality of life. We deserve better. And we, we have been forgotten about and we and we have to we the, have to the forgotten ease, huh? It's, it's sad to say, but look at the actions. I mean, people don't have to tell you a lot, but yeah, look at the actions. I mean, especially people like me and you who grew up in these, 
And oh, actually, man. I was, I'm 37 years old. I was here before Katrina. I mean, just seeing the difference now, I was like, wow. It's like night and day. It's like we, if yeah. we would have, if we would have knew 14 years ago, this is what we would have came home to. I don't, I don't believe we would have came back and relocated him. Most people, most people came back because they, they, they remember what they, what they left and how it looked and what was happening, you know, direction was going in. So of course you're assuming that you know, <laughs> gonna be the same way. And even when you see the other areas around the city coming up, you are you keep thinking the east next. Oh, we got ours coming. We can now return. You know, just but it. And, but and, and, and you realize hey, that turn never came. It's like you know, right? We keep one for you, three for me. <laughs> one for you, four for me. Right, one right. For you. And sometimes when we get to one, it'll move just a five for me, six for me, one for you. Like they gave me Walmart and but I don't see you got everything else. Right, right. You know why I'm right. high, but hey. And that's why, I, and that's why I want to, I want to just keep touching on that. The people need to know what's going on. And that's why I say, a lot of people say, well, you know, you can't, you, you can lead without being in politics. That may be true, but the stipulations on that. Mm -hmm. You need somebody in that room. That look like you. That, that look like you. you. That represent you. You know, you that need somebody you come from. in that conversation. You need, when decisions are being made. And that's yeah. why I tell people all the time, we, if we, if we decided to, if we put most of our time into things that counted, which I never tell nobody not to do, not to live their dream. Mm -hmm. But everybody don't be a basketball player, football player, rapper. Right. But just think if we turn it around, prosecutor, FBI, law, judge, exactly. district attorney. We we, if we wanted to be in places where, or, or banking, or you know something that affects, and and, and and when you look at other cultures. Some of the most most of their cultures, they serve their purpose to serve their people. Exactly. And we got to start doing that. Exactly. We got enough LeBron James. We got enough basketball players. Especially if you know you're not that good of a basketball player anyway. <laughs> you and, know? And, and that's what comes with being transparent. Look. <laughs> like look. I I'm love, not I saying love, yeah. I love your yeah, son. Yeah. You're good. No. Well, come on, I'm a, come on, bro. I mean, you smaller than you way better than Matt. I mean, they, you know what I'm saying? They, they so take threes. that scholarship. Way better than Matt than shooting threes. Right. Take that full scholarship. <laughs> It's a chance you, you may not go to the NBA, but yeah. at least you got your degree. Exactly. Free of charge. You, you can, can try the NBA, but like, yeah. like you say, it would make some more sense. I think a lot of times kids don't see it that way because parents don't see it that way. I mean, I had kids at a young age, and I didn't see it that way. Yeah. You know, so I saw things differently because I was you know, a young parent, you know, and I saw things differently. And, the, and, the, and, so, and that, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But now, you know, my, my, my son's a little older. It's not too late because one of them in college and one of them is uh, a, a junior. But the knowledge there. you acquired yeah, over the years. Exactly. But my daughters, they're going to be on a whole different level because now I see things a totally different way. But I wish I, you know what I'm saying, I was a young parent. When you so, was coming up. Yeah, coming up. New Orleans East. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I saw things different, you know. But if, like I say, we, we, do, we do need more. Our people have to start serving our purposes and not just always want to take the easy route and just become a, you could be a rapper. Just, you know. I mean, but if you have been doing five years, she ain't going nowhere. It's time to say, you know what? I'm still going. It, it's going to be second priority instead of first priority. I still going to do it on the side, whatever, whatever. But you know, we need somebody to tell us, to tell them, all right. <laughs> can't be 25 years old, still putting out mixtapes. Can't be 30 years old, still trying to be. Because you have response. You're a grown a, man. A you got to pay rent. You got to. Exactly. Life still goes on, and exactly. we all have. Uh, goals that are dreams that we want to do but you have to be that's why i say reality is something and that that's one of my biggest fears for today's society is that people rather be entertained than live in the confines of reality and that's what really scares me that people rather hear something false than the truth because you know a lot of people can't handle the truth. They, they may want the truth, yeah. but they can't handle it. And sometimes you don't you don't think that might be a problem in our generation. Like you said with the rapper thing, if you 35, you're you, still trying you know, to make you, it. You're still trying to make it. You've been rapping since you was in your 20s, and you ain't never mean, went nowhere. I mean, you still can do it, but it can't be a problem. I mean, you gotta oh, be yeah, realistic. Yeah, you gotta you know? be realistic. But man, one more time, man. So why people should vote for you, man? And once Both for me as the, the young man with the plan. Young man with a plan. Essentially, if you want action, vote for Anthony Jackson. There you go. Young man with a plan. If you want action, vote for Anthony Jackson. That's 
appreciate brother. you, man. Thank you, yes, man. Yes, yes, sir, you, man. Thank you for allowing me some of your time, man. Yes, thank you for allowing me to have this platform. And again, thank all the, the people that's going to watch this. I hope y'all please like and share. Leave feedback. Please follow me on my uh, state rep page, Anthony Jackson Jr. for state representative, District 100. And please, my, my, my numbers, my emails are on there. Please call me. Let me know what you think. If you ever want to find me on a daily basis, I'm always at PJ's Coffee, supporting our businesses and making sure... PJ's these, Coffee, and where is that? On Reed Boulevard. In New Orleans East. In New Orleans East. We got to support <laughs> our businesses, y'all. Thank you, Brother Jack. Thank you, sir. You have All a good right. one, man. You too.